Hey, it is coffee with the coach time. It's Tuesday. We are on the big island of Hawaii, and it is draft day for us because this is we are going to do something that has never been done in the history of mankind, in the history of the internet, in the history of football. We are going to bring to you one round of the people's draft. All right, the people's draft. We are going to let you, the fans, because this is your show. This ain't my show. We're going to let you make the picks today in the people's draft. So let's get started because we got 32 picks to make. I want to bring in my man, Magic Mike. Where you at, Mike? Don't be hiding back there. I get out here, of here. here. How's it now, going? I understand that you have some unbelievable technology for us today and more than a few more than a few surprises along the way, I might add. I mean, I wouldn't say it's Steve Jobs unveiling the iPhone or the iPad for the first time, but there might be a few videos. There might be a few things. But uh, yeah, my, it's definitely the most interactive episode you've had anyway. And it's, it's going to be a good laugh for us. We said in Ireland, it's going to be a good crack. Uh, welcome to everybody. Um, obviously, Jeff, you're live on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, around the world. So uh, it's going to be good. Can't wait to see who's going to be picked first. Well, after First this, one, after this one, we might be on every platform there is. I mean, we might be on the high diving platform because we are. This is this show has taken fans where they've never been before, and that's live in the draft room, making the draft. And we've got our draft expert with us today, Spencer Zimmerman from calling in from Miami FLA. Spence, how's it in Miami today? Sunny, sunny and hot, like it's supposed to be. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Spence. This is going to be really epic because, bro, we're going to have fans, fan groups. This is the interactive show. And what we're going to do is give you the role of Mel Kuyper and let you evaluate these picks that each one of the, the clubs makes as we go through the 32. Now, this is saying that there are no trades. We're going straight with the the uh, formula that's in, in place right now. There may be trades as we get to the to the regular draft, that other draft that they're doing in Cleveland. You know, it's not quite as much fun as this one. But this one, we're going to go, Fred Funk says it correctly. Woo! It is time. Let's <laughs> go. To, let's get to let's get to the let's get to the festivities. All right. So I'm the commissioner, right? Do I get that role? Huh? We actually have we, we actually have a guy, Michael. You Grimes, have a commissioner. For you. Well, I, right. I'm, not, I'm not sure if he's a commissioner, but he, he asked me earlier on last minute, can I send Jeff a message? So do you want to see it? Hey, absolutely. This is the people's show, baby. Let's go for it. Oh yes, for the first time in history, I declare the 2021 People's Draft open. I love it. Michael Grimes, thank you so much for opening the draft, the people's draft, the first ever people's draft. So let's get right to it. Picking first in the number one slot, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yes, sir. Here we go. Uh, this is the first pick. Uh, here we go, boys. This is it. One out of 32. Here it is, the Jaguars. Hi, I'm Craig Strachan from UKDraft.co.uk and I get the honour of opening this year's People's Draft. With the first pick of the People's Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select quarterback Trevor Lawrence from Clemson. Craig, I want to say thank you for opening the draft. Great start. Spence, no suspense here. I mean, this is what everybody thought, correct? Yeah, you're right, Jeff. You know, that's that's kind of how the, the story is probably about to play out. You know, when we see on Thursday, I mean, you're getting a, a player that, you know, was probably undoubtedly the number one pick, you know, and he was tested by Jacksonville through the pre-draft process. You know, you, you had Urban Meyer talk about, you know, them uh, looking at Justin Fields, looking at uh, some of the uh, Zach Wilson, some of the other quarterbacks. But I think they get their guy and I think he's coming into a, a better than you think situation. It's got a solid offensive line. You know, you have Marvin Jones, he acquired in free agency. DJ Chark, LaVisca Chanu, Phil Dorsett. So you got some weapons there, you know, and in a pretty established O-line, you know, signing Andrew Norwell and having Cam Robinson and Juwan Taylor on the bookend. So he's not walking into a, a really a bear covered situation. You know, I think this could be an environment where we could see him potentially, you know, really hit the ground running. 
All right, I got to ask you this because one of the things, as soon as they anoint a guy as the guy, then everybody else is trying to find holes and everybody's just trying to pick him apart. He did an interview with Sport, I believe it was Sports Illustrated, and he came across as a guy that maybe football was down his list of priorities in his personal life. Any concerns about that if you're a, an organization drafting this kid with the first pick? You know, I think the Jaguars have. You know, we'll see on Thursday would have had enough time to vet that situation, you know, whether it's online or getting to meet him in person. You know, I've, I've heard, you know, you've heard rumors about him working with the staff already diving into the playbook, but it doesn't show up on tape. This is a competitive guy. I mean, he wasn't a COVID opt out, you know, not that I, you know, I don't hold as much stock as some of the other teams in that, but, um, you know, you, you see it on the field. He, he lays it on the line every play, you know, the competitiveness and the toughness and the poise he shows. So, you know, just because he has, you know, some some other, you know, endeavors or some other interests off the field or some, you know, other priorities in his life, uh, it doesn't show up when he plays football and the way he prepares for it. I think that's a really great point. We had Dylan Reisner, the, the all-pro guard from the Broncos, on the show earlier in the year, and he talked about when he was going through the combine process during an interview, one of the head coaches stopped the interview and basically threw him out of the room because he said there were things that were more important than football in his life, and he was talking about his religion, of course, but that's that's an interesting and interesting concept it looks like the jets who are on the clock are ready to make the selection so mike can we have the jets please first pick of two if i can pick it i want to guess 23 later on might be wrong that's how much is engraved in my skull here's fraser from the new york uh, jets uk and ireland group hey guys Fraser here, one of the admins for the New York Jets UK slash Ireland fan page. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. First of all, I just want to give a big shout out to all the members within these groups who helped us decide who to select in this mock draft. So with that said, the New York Jets UK slash Ireland fan page with the second pick in the People's Draft select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. There we go. The second quarterback off the draft, a guy that when you looked at this, the film could make Spence in my mind, he could make the throws, all the off platform throws is athletic, a very, very good athlete. He's going to press the edge. He's going to be able to help that young offensive line that they're putting together in, in New York. What's your take on this kid, Zach Wilson out of BYU? I think you're bang on, Jeff. You know, I, I like the scheme fit. You know, I think he's going to fit really nicely in that wide zone scheme with uh, LaFleur and company coming over from the 49ers. And, you know, if they can get that run game going, you're, you're going to see a guy that's going to make a lot of plays in the perimeter, you know, in the play action game, you know, and make some of those, you know, wow, off platform throws that we saw. And listen, there's, there's some pieces there. You know, I, I like signing Corey Davis over from Tennessee. He's a big, strong physical player in the perimeter. You got Jamison Crowder working over the middle of the field, which is going to be nice in some of those bootleg or naked concepts that they run. And uh, I think Zach can potentially, you know, if he's going to be the guy, we'll see. He might be able to win them some games. Just he has that type of talent and playmaking ability. So I like the fit. You know, I think this is kind of where it's, uh, you know, leading on Thursday. Well, I think it's really interesting, too, when you talk about this kid and you talk about New York City and – you know that the New York media, the New, that's the toughest media market in the United States. He's going to be under incredible scrutiny. There are more newspapers in New York than any other city in the United States. And here's a kid now who's never gone outside the state of Utah. When I talk, he obviously he's traveled and all that, but he's a Utah kid, born there, played his college football at BYU. This is going to be a transplant situation. He's going to go to the East Coast. He's going to go to New York City. He's going to go to all those those bright lights and all that attention. It'll be interesting to see how the young kid from Utah handles it. Now, we got the San Francisco 49ers are now on the clock with a pick that they got from Miami via Houston. Mike, are the 49ers ready to make their pick? They're ready to make their pick. It was a late entry this morning now, Jeff, but they're ready to make their pick, and here they are. Hi, this is your boy Nick from the Shank Club NFL People's Draft. And with the third pick of the People's Draft, the San Francisco 49ers pick Justin Fields QB. Hope you do all doing well. Stay safe, people. Let's go. Yeah, 
This was the pick that everybody wanted to see what was going to happen. San Francisco, obviously, when you go up that high, you were going to take a quarterback. And there was so much speculation. Early on, it was Justin Fields. Then it was Mac Jones. Trey Lance got some play for this one. But after all of the intrigue, all of it is, all of it said and done, Nick, representing from the Shank Club, representing the 49ers, decided to go with Justin Fields. Spence, your take. You know, it's a, I'm sure Justin Fields, if this happens on Thursday, he's going to be a happy guy. You know, this is a great situation to go into with the scheme, with the talent. I mean, you talk about the offensive line, Alex Mack, Trent Williams and company, Brandon Ayuk, who's, you know, really rising, Debo Samuel. They bring back Mohamed Sanu, a nice, you know, steady veteran player to add in the mix. And not to mention, you know, one of the best tight ends in the league, George Kittle. So, It'll be interesting to see, you know, what they do with uh, the current starting quarterback there. But this is a good fit. I think this is a this would be a real high ceiling pick. You know, believing in Justin Fields' upside. You know what he can do. You know, once he kind of gets comfortable in that offense, because he has, you know, a lot of a lot of really a lot of high coveted traits there. So it's it's an interesting pick. But you know, it could be a really good situation for Fields. Well, I think I think the interesting pick is it's it's you're choosing athlete you know, over non-athlete when, when you're talking about he and Mac Jones. And I, again, I understand Mac Jones, 77% completion percentage at Alabama and all that. But in this day and age, in this National Football League, you got to be able to make plays with your feet. And Justin Fields has proven he has the ability to do that. He's been a leader. He's been productive as a player. I think he's a good choice. Now we the Atlanta Falcons are on the clock. Mike, do we have a Falcons pick yet? We have a Falcons pick, and let's see how far down the board Mac Jones goes. Here's the Falcons on the clock. Hi, everybody. My name's Danny, and I'm from ATL Falcons UK. And with the fourth pick of the People's Draft, Atlanta Falcons select Kyle Pitts, tight end straight out of Florida. Go Falcons. Now, there was, there was a lot of speculation about this pick, too, because of the fact that the Falcons have multiple needs across their football team. This was going to be a reflection of where they felt they were right now. If they went with the best tight end on the board, probably the best player on the board right now in Kyle Pitts, it was a signal that they feel like they're in the Super Bowl window. If they went with one of the top five quarterbacks, you could say, hey, we're building I think Arthur Blank and company feel like they've got a good football team, and now they've got a coveted, much coveted piece in a guy that maybe I, I think really has Hall of Fame type skills as that receiving tight end that everybody wants in the NFL right now. Spence, your take. I'm sure there's a couple teams banging the table right now. So listen, Matt Ryan's a happy guy. You talk about, you know, we call Kyle Pitts a tight end, but this is a guy that's just going to line up on offense wherever they put him, whether it's out wide in the slot, in line. And, you know, talk about having to cover him, Julio, Calvin. I mean, they do also have Hayden Hurst to deploy in some of their 12 personnel packages, you know, which we probably will see from Arthur Smith, judging by what he did in Tennessee. So this is a slam dunk pick. You know, it's easy. It's 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 safe with a lot of high upside. So I really do. Uh, this would be a nice pick for the Falcons. All right, the Cincinnati Bengals are on the on the clock, and there's a little little hesitation with Cincinnati. They've got to make a decision here. This is going to be really an interesting one to me because when I look at this pick, I'm saying you got to go with Penay Sewell, who has you know again tremendous tremendous upside as an offensive tackle to protect your your quarterback who's coming off of an ACL injury. There is also a school of thought to say they're going to go out and they're going to go at Jamar Chase and put the band back together from those LSU days. This is going to be an interesting one. Mike, is it in? Is the pick in from Cincinnati? The pick is in, just very quickly, because the comments can't show up here. Sean Club's comment in the way. Miami Dolphins UK saying fins up. Hello. Glenner says no to that pick. And Spence, you are right from Glenner as well. It's popping off on Twitter and everywhere. We'll get the comments in from YouTube later on. The pick is in from our friends over at Who Day UK for the Bengals. Let's see if they took your advice, Jeff. Hey there, I'm Jamie Rowe of Bengals UK at Who Day underscore UK. And with the fifth pick of the People's Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. Boy, I tell you what, there's reflection of what is really the 
kind of, you know, it's a copycat league. It's always been that way. I think what people are seeing is you got to you get your franchise quarterback a la Kansas City, and then you put all the weapons you can around that guy. And you basically you're going to try and outscore people because that's what it's going to come down to. Now, Jamar Chase, in my mind, coming off of what was his pre-COVID season, the season that they won the national championship in LSU, or at LSU, I, I felt he would have been a first-round pick if he had come out that year. Certainly didn't hurt himself because he opted out. Spence, what's this kid going to bring to the Bengals' offense? Well, maybe Joe Burrow was in a draft meeting or two. So <laughs> I, think he, you know, I think he would definitely be happy with this situation. Um, you know, you look at what they did in the offseason. They did sign Riley Reef from Detroit. They got Jonah Williams coming off a peck injury returning. You know, that some say he could play guard, but, you know, if they do make this pick, I think it shows confidence in his ability as a left tackle. And uh, listen, matching him up with Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, that's a nice little receiving crew that Jamar can stretch the field. He's tough. He's physical. You know, he has chemistry with his quarterback that, you know, it's easier said than done to be able to assume that, you know, anyone else you draft is going to have that. That's a proven fact. So, again, nice pick for them, you know, based on, you know, what they have, you know, even in the offensive line category as well. Well, you go, you, you take Moss and you take Joe Burrow, and now you add Jamar Chase. Those guys were all Bengal Tigers at LSU. Now they're just Bengals in Cincinnati. You can bet it is going to be popping off next year on offense in Cincinnati. Now the Miami Dolphins are on the clock in a pick that they got from Philadelphia. All right, let's talk about this pick because I think Chris Greer has done an outstanding job of really controlling his destiny with the draft picks that he's amassed for the next couple of years. When you look at the Dolphins, again, where do you go with this one? Do you, Panay Sewell's still out there, a, a, you know, a, a generational talent offensive lineman. Obviously, they need help around their, their young quarterback, more weapons around their young quarterback. Do you go for a receiver here, Spence, or do you go for the best player on the on the board right now? You know, I think they're going to kind of stay true to what they've always done. And, you know, I think it gets overused. But, you know, you saw it, you know, when they took Tunsil years ago. They're going to take the best player available on the board, you know. And that Tunsil pick turned out to be a, an even better pick probably than they imagined with the draft capital they've amassed with it. So, you know, I think they stay true to best player available. All right, on your board, who's the best player available right now? Yeah, right now for me, that's going to be Panay Sewell. So we'll see. We'll see that's where it goes. Big, that's the big guy out of Oregon. The picks in, Mike. What do we got from the Dolphins with this pick? Here we go. We got the biggest fan group, one of the biggest fan groups for the NFL in the UK and Europe. Miami Dolphins UK. Here they are. I am Spencer. I run the Miami Dolphins UK Twitter feed. With the sixth pick of the NFL draft, people's choice. The Miami Dolphins select Pen I saw. Offensive lineman, Oregon. Binza. They're available on the draft. Now, again, I had a discussion the other day with Brian Baldinger about this, right? And, and I felt that this kid has the kind of physical tools to be a 10-year, 12-year cornerstone left tackle in the National Football League. Maybe, I mean, again... Uh, there was some late kind of disinformation in my mind because when you put on the tape, I didn't see it. There was a lot of talk late about how he wasn't physical enough. He didn't dominate guys at the point of attack. He never knocked anybody off the ball, all that kind of stuff. Spence, what was your take on that? Listen, draft season as we know it, you know, we, we're, we hear a lot about, you know, teams coming out saying, you know, a COVID opt-out player is going to go as high as they assume or, you know, this player, you know, that – to me, you know, we got to we got to kind of filter through. There's always a signal through the noise, you know, with some of this draft information. And you got to be able to disseminate it and know that, you know, if someone really has strong feelings and hoping to add that guy to their team, there's no incentive for them to uh, leak out positive information about the player. So I think that's just something you always got to take into context. I put on the tape and uh, I had no issues with his balance, his range. He's plenty physical. You know, I, I like the pick here because – Listen, they, they're reuniting him with another Pac-12 lineman in Austin Jackson. They just traded Eric Flowers uh, to the Washington football team. You know, so they got Robert Hunt that could slide into guard. And, and you know, Panay can play right tackle. And I think it'd be a great fit for him at right tackle. And 
first and foremost, they got to protect their, you know, their franchise quarterback. And, and you couple that with the best player available on the board. So I like the pick. I, I do too. It was a no brainer to me because of the fact that, you know, you, one of the issues about Tua, and I love Tua, you know, I love his personality. I love his leadership. I love his accuracy. I love his arm. But the one thing you can say about him is durability question. Well, if you got a quarterback with a durability question, the first thing you better do is you better put offensive linemen around him and, and protect him. So the Lions are on the clock. Interesting first pick for Dan Campbell in his or in his new organization in Detroit. Mike is the pick in. The pick is in. It's Matt from the roar of the Lions, the, one of the biggest Lions groups in the UK. The pick is in. Here we go. Hi there, I'm Matthew Turner. I'm the host of the Roar of the Lions UK podcast. We are picking for the Detroit Lions at pick number seven, and with the seventh pick in the 2021 People's Draft, the Detroit Lions select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. Wide receiver makes complete sense to me. After you lose your top wide receiver in free agency, the Lions go out and get a weapon right off the top. Jalen Waddle from Alabama. Spence, what's the scouting book say on Jalen Waddle? Speed, vertical threat, right? Probably the, the most explosive down the field receiver in the draft. So, you know, you're you're you know, you're adding that to a mix of they did require acquire Bashad Perriman in free agency, Tyrell Williams. They were pretty aggressive in, you know, getting some veteran receivers to the mix, but uh, none of them have that kind of take the top off coverage speed you know, that, uh, that Jalen Waddle possesses. So you're getting a down-the-field vertical threat for Jared Goff. All right, Carolina Panthers are on the clock, and Mac Jones continues to free fall. Trey Lance continues to fall. Could Carolina conceivably go with a quarterback here? It's it's evident, obviously, that, that Teddy Bridgewater's days in Carolina are about to go. They went out and they got Sam Darnold. No guarantee there. Do you go with a young quarterback here? You go best player on the board. They hit, they went all defense last year. Is it time now for them to go back to the offensive side? A bunch of really fine offensive tackles still on the board. Let's see what the Carolina Panthers have done. With the eighth pick in the NFL People's Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Rashawn Slater, tackle, Northwestern. I tell you, I love it. I love the pick. I love the strategy behind it. Again, Spence, this was a guy when we talked about the tackles, you had rated as your second best tackle. A guy that shut out Chase Young in a one-on-one -on -one battle that they had. This kid has a ton of talent, but Spence, he got real short arms. How do you how do you look at this pick? Yeah, he you know he measured in a lot taller um, than I thought, and, and the arm length was was a little bit uh, below average, but you know not actually better than you know what I expected based on some of the uh, junior you know information that was kind of being disseminated there. So I like the pick. You know, I think he is the best pure pass protector in the draft. You know, when we talk about Panay and the balance, you know. Uh, really with, with Rashawn, I mean, this is a foot athlete. You know, this is a guy that's going to protect the blind side, you know, and just can match with any type of athletic rusher. I think it's going to be fun in practice watching him and Brian Burns go at it, you know, in some of those one-on-one -on -one, uh, situations. So I like the pick, you know, you get Sam Bradford, which is just going to be a great situation for him, to, you know, to get another left tackle and then to uh, kind of mix into that new offense, that Matt Rule offense and Joe Brady offense. So I like the pick. I think it's a great pick. All right, now the, the Denver Broncos are on the clock. And for Denver, this is like got to be so enticing with your quarterback situation with Drew Locke. Do you take Trey Lance here? Is Trey Lance the guy with his athleticism, with that big arm, with all the success? He's only thrown one interception as a college quarterback. Doesn't have a great big body of work, right? Not, not a 50 or 60 game guy in terms of starting as a college player, but certainly an incredibly talented player out of North Dakota State. Or do you go best player in the draft? I, I think this is really, really going to be a critical, critical pick for the Broncos and a pick that's going to resonate in that organization for years to come. Mike, are the Broncos in? 
the Broncos are in. People keep your comments coming. It's popping on social. Uh, one thing I'll say is Rashawn Slater at seven from each app says L Morg hashtag one pride. Lions fans seem happy enough. Here's the Broncos pick. The pick is in. I'm Colm Cronin from Broncos Europe. The Denver Broncos are stacked on defense. That secondary in particular has the opportunity to be scary good. We also have a host of receiving talent. And so, in my capacity as general manager, with the ninth overall pick in the People's Draft 2021, the three times world champions, Denver Broncos select Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State University. Let's go! First of all, first of all, he wins the draft right there for showing up with that outfit on and then calling himself the general manager. I love it. That's what this is all about. We're having fun here. I think it's a great choice. I think you can't make any better choice right there if you're the Broncos. Spence, what's your take? It's a slam dunk pick. I mean, he might have been in draft meetings too with the Broncos because he hit it on the head. I mean, they shored up the secondary in free agency. They grab Ronald Darby. They grab Kyle Fuller. You know, they cream Jackson they bring back with Justin Simmons on the tag. They got Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton on offense and Noah Fant. Juwan James is coming back on an opt-out. I mean, that's the spot. That's the pick with, with what I said before through the draft, taking Trevor Lawrence out of it. Trey Lance might have the second highest ceiling, you know, and, and that's what you do, you know, and whether he plays right away with Drew Locke or not, I think it's a really, really good situation if he were to slip that fall that far. All right. Broncos Nation, Broncos fans around the world, let's hear what you have to say. Hit us on Twitter. Let us know what you feel about that pick. Trey Lance out of North Dakota State comes down the freeway to Denver, and he will add athleticism and competition, and I think that's a key thing. Competition in that quarterback room with the Broncos. Mike, I want you to take off your engineering hat for about 30 seconds. And, and again, I know you love that orange and blue of Denver. What do you feel about this pick? If the Broncos are sitting in 48 hours with the opportunity to get Trey Lance, and if they didn't do it, it would be unforgivable as far as I'm concerned. I mean, Spencer's talked there about guys, like, you know, keeping Justin Simmons and stuff, but they need to get competition for Drew Locke because if they don't, there's nobody decent there in a veteran capacity. If you take on Teddy Bridgewater, if you maybe swap picks, he's got too big of a contract. It's the only option available. It's the best option available. I personally think... Hats off aside, I think Trey Lance will be there at nine on Thursday night. And please, God, if I put my hat back on, that is the case. But uh, yes, Jeff Collum dresses like that all the time. He just walks around Dublin wearing that shirt and tie. So well, I'll tell you what. First of all, and the other thing that I'm going to tell you made, made a big hit with me, he said tree. And when you say it in, in Hawaii, you don't say three, you say tree. So he's actually speaking pigeon. So I love a general manager that understands how to, how to get the Hawaiian heart going. All right, now. There's a, there's a pattern here, and this is very, very interesting, and I think this may actually happen when we go to the real draft. I mean, this is the real draft. That other thing they're doing in Cleveland is kind of – everybody is, you know. Anyway, do you realize, men, that there has not been a defensive player taken, all right? Now we're going to – we got the Dallas Cowboys on the clock at number 10. Not a defensive player has come off the board. Dallas has struggled unbelievably bad on defense. They got to go defense here. I mean, I'm looking for you. I'm, I want to need a reaction. You think they're going to go defense here? Or what do we? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's when you look at the, you know, what they have on offense and, and you plug Dak back into that situation and the resources they have on the offensive line and the receivers. I mean, it makes sense, you know, and they're getting a new defensive coordinator. They have some pieces on defense. You know, I think. You know, the obvious one is going to see uh, where things are addressed in the secondary. You know, just losing Byron Jones, I think, was a, you know, was a tough blow for them, you know, and he's obviously excelling in that Miami defense. So, you know, they got Trayvon Diggs coming back on year two. I think they got a good nickel quarter in Jordan Lewis. So we'll see kind of if they compare that. Well, there's an outstanding linebacker at Penn State that's still still on the board. You got all those defensive backs. I love J.C. Horn. Patrick Sertain's a safe pick out of Alabama. All right, Mike. Let's see what the Cowboys are going to do with the 10th pick of the People's Draft. 
Indeed, uh, SBM seven four seven. Steve, if I'm the Cowboys now, I'm taking calls, Jeff. I know you're going on the Dallas Cowboys UK's twenty four hour show on Thursday. I'm very sorry we didn't get them on, but I think we've got an adequate replacement. And Jeff, you might know him, so the pick is in. Well, I was going to try and deliver this in a Patrick McAfee style, but quite frankly, he's a lot better at it than me. So I'll just say this. At number 10, this is a prime spot as far as I'm concerned for a possible trade. Do not be surprised if the New England Patriots try and make a move should there be a quarterback still on the board. Assuming no trade is made, though, with the 10th overall pick of the 2021 People's Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Patrick Sertain, cornerback, Alabama. Can we call it? All right. Safe pick, great player, need area, right? But I think, and again, that was awesome to have Richard deliver that pick. But I gotta tell you, I would think if it if it went like this, right? If it went just like this, that that conversation between Bill Belichick and Jerry Jones for that 10th pick with Mac Jones still out there, I got to believe, I got to believe it would be a haul for Dallas because you know that one of those quarterbacks that Bill Belichick covets is Mac Jones out of Alabama who played for Nick Saban, who was an assistant for him in Cleveland. A lot of, I know that's a lot of conspiracy theory, but I think though you connect the dots, it makes sense. But I love the pick. What's your take, Spence? Yeah, I love the analysis from Richard. I mean, it makes sense, you know, thinking about that potential scenario. And, you know, like we talked about, there's three quality quarterback or cornerbacks that, you know, you might be able to still get sliding back. But, you know, in the event of them taking Pat Sertain, I think it's a safe pick. You know, he's going to get reunited with his uh, former teammate, Trevon Diggs, where they're going to shore up both sides of the corner. I like the fit in the, uh, you know, in the uh, Dan Quinn defense. You know, I think that's a nice when we talk about you know, that cloud cover three corner, you know, as a base defense, Sertain can do that. You know, he can play man, you know, he's going to be physical in the run game. I think he's a number one corner and I think it's a really, really safe uh, pick with some upside. The Giants are now on the clock. The New York football Giants on the clock. Fans out there, give us your feedback. Hit us with comments. Let us know what you're thinking. I got to believe if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan that you love that pick. And I know Cowboy Nation around the world is really, really adamant that that defense needs to improve. So if you're a Cowboy fan, let us know what you think of the pick. Michael, what do we got out there from the fans? What's the feedback right now as we go to commercial? I didn't want to shout out that before you got the, the Cowboys pick, but at Chichio says for the Broncos, we aren't good at picking quarterbacks. Give a quarterback pick. Give a quarterback pick a wide berth. Go with Locke for one more season. I agree, but you, but you need a backup. And bringing in somebody like that for Lance, for example, would surely Jeff be a good pick for there. Um, come on, Giants. Devonta Smith says Danny Ford. Uh, Locke no more. Lance to the four, says the big MCP. Uh, there's a lot of comments, folks. I'm going to try and get them going. Uh, yeah, loads of different comments. Loads of people are happy with the Cowboys, but a lot of people saying as well, the Cowboys will probably in real life trade down if, if it does get to that point. All right, I hear that the Giants pick is in. Let's go to the New York football Giants. Next season, the Giants will return to the playoffs as NFC East champions. A general manager, Dave Gellman, promises playmakers during the offseason, and he's delivered on that. For the first film of this year's draft, the Giants are going to go defense and select Micah Parsons, linebacker from Penn State. immediately the Giants get more athletic at linebacker. And I mean, they played, you, you look at some of the guys they played, Martinez and some of those guys they played with last, last year, good football players, not flash players at linebacker. This is a guy that can go sideline to sideline. I love the pick. They are gonna, you know, they're gonna continue to upgrade that defense. A little surprised that they didn't go tackle with all the tackles that are out there right now, but they gotta think Micah Parsons was the best player available at number 11. Spence? I agree. You know, I think it's a great pick for them. I think they're getting a guy that's instinctive, physical, really, really athletic. You know, he's going to help out, whether it's in the passing game. Um, he can blitz. 
you know, there's just so much upside there. And, and really, when you look at the linebacker crew, like you said, Jeff, you know, with Blake Martinez, you know, Tay Crowder being an undrafted guy playing some significant snaps for him. I know they acquired Reggie Ragland. I think it fills, you know, an area of need as well, you know, adding to that, you know, top one of the top, if not the best player available on the board right now. All right. Philadelphia is on the clock. The Philadelphia Eagles on the clock. This is going to be a key, key draft in my estimation for Howie Rossman and the Eagles organization. Nick Sirianni, new head coach on board, new organization, you know, new some new thoughts. And, you know, we're, we're and but this is a team now only a few years away from having been a Super Bowl team. It is aged. It has changed. They've had trouble with injuries. This is a key, key pick for the Eagles. Who do you like here for the Eagles, Spence? You know, I think the Eagles, uh, you know, are going to be looking at multiple areas. You know, I've heard Howie Rosen say they're going to stay true to the best player available on the board. And I agree with that. You know, there's there's they could, you know, whether it's going with another offensive lineman, you know, just because of all the injuries they've had. You know, I think they're getting a lot of guys healthy, you know, coming back, whether it's Lane Johnson, Brandon Brooks, Andre Dillard. But, you know, you saw them really struggle, you know, when they when they you know suffered the amount of injuries they suffered on their own line. I mean, receiver could be also an option. I don't know if they'll go back to back with Rieger and then obviously corner, you know, to pair someone with Darius Slay, you know, to have two kind of bookend corners. But there's a lot of areas they can go. Um, so it'll be interesting to see kind of where they do uh, or who's available, you know, on Thursday. Well, I'll tell you what, right here, if it if it falls like this and I'm Philadelphia, I'm going J.C. Horn all day long because I love his nastiness. I love his attitude. I think he'll be a cult hero in Philadelphia with those fans. So, again, uh, oh, Mike, the Eagles are up. What do you got? He picks in. Here we go. And you know who this guy is. With the 12th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select wide receiver Devonta Smith, Alabama. Well, Spence, it, it fits with what you said. They, if, if you, if they had Smith higher on the board than Horn or any of those defensive players, this is what he said he was going to do. Howie Rossman was going to go receiver. They have gone receiver a ton in the last few years without great results. What makes you believe that Smith can be a winner for him? I like this pick. I do. You know, I think Devontae is, you know, somebody that is getting, you know, somewhat overlooked through the process because of, you know, the the weight issue that you keep hearing. But, you know, like I said before on our show, when you see the Tate, this is a strong kid. He could have a wiry build, but he's tough. He is probably, you know, take Jamar out of it, you know, and take put Jamar in it. He's probably one of the most complete route runners in the draft. He's got the quickness. He's got the ability after the catch all the intangibles, all the stuff you hear about him. I mean, playing, you know, in the national championship game with the, with, you know, with the finger and hand issue, this guy is going to be a great fit, you know, with a new head coach that has an offensive scheme. You have a second year quarterback coming in and you look at the receiver depth chart, you know, you got Greg Ward, Jalen Rager coming back and Travis Fulgham, you know, with Quez Watkins, you know, I think there is a need there. And, you know, you have somebody that easily could be a number one receiver, you know, in that offense and a good fit for them. All right, the Los Angeles Chargers are on the board. Let's hear from the fans. What do we got out there, Michael? A couple of ones uh, at 77, Willie. Jerry has the X factor. You just never know. Uh, Steve says, agree, Jeff. I think that was in regards to the Cowboys. Uh, David Crook, any concerns about the Parsons rumors doing the rounds that he could fall further on Thursday night? There does seem, there seems to be a wee bit of talk about that there, but Parsons falling on, on Thursday night. Do you, do you think it might happen? Or? Well, I think some of that is disinformation. You know, clubs that may covet a guy start to put out bad information about the guy, whether it's made up or actually true, in trying to get other people off that guy's trail. That's some of the, you know, the intrigue that goes with this. Uh-oh, I hear that noise. It sounds like the Charger pick is in. Here it is. And here's Lee with the Chargers on full 10 yards. And welcome to the Chargers War Room here in Cleveland, Ohio for the 2021 NFL Draft. It's Lee Wakefield here from Full 10 Yards and um, Full 10 Yards College Football Podcast. And I'm really pleased to announce the Chargers pick here in the People's Mock Draft. With the 13th pick of the People's Mock Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Christian Darislaw, left tackle, 
from Virginia Tech University. Thank you very much. The big guy out of Virginia Tech, on I, I, one of the really good players on the draft board, and I think an indication of how important they feel it is to protect their franchise quarterback. I like the pick. I like the pick a lot, as a matter of fact. Spence, your take. Yeah, Jeff. I mean, you look at the depth chart, you know, they, they brought over Brian Beluga, but they definitely have a hole at left tackle, you know, and you need to protect, uh, you know, that really, really special rookie that they had last year that's coming into his second year. They got the weapons for him on the outside. They got a defensive head coach with a prime defense. Um, you know, I think the if they do, if the pick, I think the pick will be tackle. It'll be interesting to see if the pick is Derisaw. And I think if it is, you know, they they believe in all the traits he has and the ability he has in the run game. And I think um, there's going to be a consensus that they can raise his urgency level. You know, what do I mean by that is that they can get him to play at the level that he flashes, you know, 100 percent of the time. You know, there's 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 some kind of low energy stuff on tape that I think is kind of circling around right now that you might see him slip a little bit. But I think the team that does pick him, you know, has vetted that in the pre-draft process, you know, and they believe that they're going to get a you know 100 percent motivated player, you know, protecting their franchise quarterback at left tackle. Let's talk about it, guys. We're at pick 14, right? And we've had how many wide receivers go off this board? We've had three offensive tackles go off this board, right? We've had four quarterbacks go off this board. It's been, this is a, we knew it was going to be offensive centric, but this is truly an offensive loaded draft up to this point. Mike, what's the, what are the fans saying out there? Man, the fans are loving it. Uh, somebody said, I can't, I can't see us using him, but knowing the Eagles, They'll take a corner despite the Cowboys, one person saying. Uh, at me, no bozo. Horn is the right pick, so I totally believe how will pick Smith. Uh, and Leo <laughs> O'Neill says, hey, chaps, good to see you, coach, and the guys at NFL Ireland. Hi. How's it going? All right. Uh, here, boys, Mac, Mac Jones is still, in the, is still out there. I know, man. Mac Jones on the – and, you know, he's going to fall further because the I, I can – I would be shocked. I would be shocked if the Vikings would go quarterback here with a defense that was historically bad last year. And, you know, Zim is a 100% defensive guy. And for him to go through a year where his son is the co-defensive coordinator along with Andre Patterson and put a defense like they put on the field last year, you just got to know he's about to sprint, sprint to the podium to pick a defensive player. And I'm going to say it's going to be one of those edge rushers, one of those edge rushers would be a perfect fit right here for Minnesota. Your take, Spence. Yeah, I mean, the kind of when you think about the Vikings and you think about, you know, Mike Zimmer, I mean, defense kind of is their MO at all levels. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's, you know, I've got to see him teach, just an unbelievable teacher, the way he works individually with players at practice, you know, whether it's in the secondary or the fronts. I mean, he is an active coach all over the field, you know. I could see tackle being an option. I mean, right now they got Rashad Hill slated in there um, and Brian O'Neill. So I could see, you know, shoring up with Kirk Cousins but you know I definitely think um you know they might add a you know, defensive player into that mix as well Mikey what's your take here for if you're if you're a Viking fan if I'm a Vikings fan I'm gonna try and go for somebody defensively like there's still a lot of good guys on the board so it's gonna be interesting to see what they do but the pick is in and we've got the great people over at the Minnesota Vikings UK and Ireland fan club who have done something a little bit different Jeff to the all Ireland right I, I love different go. I love different With the 14th pick of the People's Draft, the UK and Ireland Minnesota Vikings Fan Club select Witty Pay. Benjamin! Benjamin! The first edge player comes off the board. Quitty Pay. We talked, we said it was going to be edge. I, I think that. Uh, a little surprise with pay, a little safer pick than Phillips and some of those guys, Rousseau, you know, who, again, there's there's questions with both those two guys. They may be better on, potentially better on tape. I think pay gives you a guy right now that understands he's played for Don Brown, played, been coached hard at Michigan. Great job by Minnesota Vikings, UK and Ireland, coming up with that little flavor right there. And I say, Skull, what do you guys say on this pick? Quitty pay from Michigan. Yeah, I think you kind of hit it on the head, Jeff, is, 
maybe not the uh, typical Minnesota Vikings uh, pass rusher profile. When you look at guys like uh, Daniil Hunter and, you know, how Anthony Barr kind of plays that Sam linebacker role and Steven Weatherly, but uh, I, I don't think it's a bad pick, you know. I mean, they, they bring over Dalvin Tomlinson. They got Mike Pierce coming back as a COVID opt-out, so they got some uh, really good interior players. They got, you know, Daniil Hunter, who when he is healthy, he's one of the best top, you know, five pass rushers in the league. So, I think that'd be a nice little uh, addition to add on the other side, you know, just not the typical uh, Vikings profile, you know, defensive end that you see with the height and the length and the size usually that they like on the front. Mike, how do you like to pick? Taking the pick, his backstory is incredible. Did you know that his mom fled like Libya or something when they were in war, gave birth to him in Guinea, and then he's over here now, obviously a, a Wolverine. Great pick. Team captain last year. I, I love the pick. I think it's I actually think I'll be shocked if he goes at 14 in the draft. I would I think right. any team would take him. Now you know that New England tried to get up to get a quarterback. They tried to trade up. They wanted to get up as high as three. Belichick's done everything he can. And I, I swear to God, the football guys must must like the Patriots a little bit because here we are at pick number 15. And Mac Jones, who many projected as the third guy to go in this draft, is still sitting out there at pick number 15. The New England Patriots are on the clock. How do we go here, Spence? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if anyone really has a good read on what the Patriots are going to do. I think they do a great job of keeping information inside their building and uh, kind of leaving everyone a little bit suspenseful when it comes draft day. But, you know, all signs kind of point to, uh, you know, having a signal caller or a future signal caller um, drafted. And definitely there's a, a lot of connection there with, uh, you know, Saban and Bilicek and uh, the offensive scheme. I think like, you know, when you look at Mac, one of the more pro ready players in terms of the scheme, he, he was uh, in, in Alabama. It makes sense. You know, it really does make sense, but, that doesn't mean that it's going to come to fruition, you know, knowing that uh, the Patriots like to keep, you know, their opinions on things inside their building. Well, the Patriots pick is in. Michael, let's go to the Patriots. Here we go. Hi, so it's Mark from the Irish NFL show. Uh, I'm also a massive New England Patriots fan. And the way this draft has gone, both myself and William Stephen Bull uh, Belichick would be very happy with how it's progressed because the Patriots have had a massive spending splurge in free agency and now they need to take advantage of the greatest market inefficiency in the NFL currently, namely a rookie quarterback superstar who they have under five years of controlled contract. The Patriots love players who are accurate. They love players who can handle the pressure of the big games and not make silly mistakes and make the right decisions at the right time. That means for me, in this, the People's Draft, the 15th pick of the New England Patriots is their selection of Mac Jones, quarterback at Alabama. It would happen if he slid this far, there was no way the Patriots were gonna let him slide farther. Saban loves this kid, again, a lot of people talk about, well, you know, he does 17 games as a starter. But you got to remember, the two starting quarterbacks prior to him were Jalen Hurts and Tua, Tua Tonga Bailoa. So, again, you can't – this kid is a bona fide, accurate quarterback. I don't like his athleticism, I'll tell you that. But the Patriots won a lot of, won a lot of rings with a non-athletic quarterback who was accurate and could make decisions. I like the pick. What do you think, Spence? I think Mark was bang on. He might have to be the resident capologist for the show because <laughs> he was right. You know, when you look when you look at the depth chart, I mean, they they, they got they got what they needed. Aguilar, Bourne, Johnu Smith, Hunter Henry. They bring back players they're familiar with, and Trent Brown and Kyle Van Noy. They add Matt Judon as a premier pass rusher. So you're talking about Mac Jones coming into a situation where does he need to play right away? Not really, because I think Cam Newton is going to be better in that offense in year two. The interesting thing will be. If they do end up, you know, if this pick comes to fruition, how they deploy both of them, you know, if they do use some type, I don't see them being a true two quarterback uh, offense, but I see them maybe taking their time with Mac Jones if they, that is the pick. So I think Cam 
with the weapons he has, you know, adding in Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith, you know, bringing in Bourne and Aguilar. I mean, Cam didn't have Edelman last year, you know, so I think it would be a good fit for Mac Jones, whether he plays week one or at all in 2021, uh, you know, I think it's a great pick. You know, there are a lot of things that are old school about Belichick and his approach a little bit. And one of those ones is you really want to groom a young quarterback. You don't want a young quarterback thrown out there too early. You're exactly right. Cam would give him an opportunity to learn, to learn to be a pro, to you know learn the nuances of the pro game. I, if, if Mac Jones would fall this far, I, I just cannot see. I agree with every what everybody said. Great pick by the Patriots here in the People's Draft. We're going to go down to the 16th pick. We go out to the desert. The Arizona Cardinals are on the clock. They are indeed. And also, I'd like to apologize on behalf of everybody for Mark's one-minute rant from the Irish NFL show. That, that went on for a long time. And the pick is in for the Cardinals, and it's a lot shorter. Here it is. My name is Tom from the British Bird Gang. With the 16th pick in the People's Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select J.C. Horn, cornerback. There's my guy. That's my guy, the son of Joe Horn, the, the uh, receiver from the, the uh, Saints who uh, took a telephone call after scoring a touchdown and changed, and changed the way the NFL lets you celebrate. J.C. Horn is that guy. He is nasty. He is competitive. He is feisty. He is strong. He is aggressive. I love that kid. You're right, Jeff. This is a fun team. I mean, from top to bottom, you know, Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, they bring in J.J. Watt. You know, you got Isaiah Simmons coming into year two, who was a highly, highly coveted player last year in the draft. Chandler Jones is coming back off an ACL and Buda Baker. And, you know, you really the biggest hole is that departure of Pat Peterson. And you add in a guy like J.C. Horn. Wow. If that comes to fruition, yeah. I mean, I think that's going to be a quick one, a quick card turning. Mikey, what's your take on this one? Jesse Horn, the potential is unbelievable. He is, a, he is honestly, boys, he has the ability to take most receivers out of the game. I mean, how, like, if I'm Laurie Fitz, I'm thinking, should I play another five years here? Kyler Murray, you're talking <laughs> to a few guys there. JJ coming in as well. Great pick. I mean, Will he go down as far as 16? I'm not sure, but British Bird Gang seem to think he's the right man for the job. So who well, knows? British, British Bird Gang, hit us back and let us know how you feel about that pick. Great job of picking him. Uh, we're going right now to one of the most historic franchises <laughs> in the National Football League, the now Las Vegas Raiders. So with the 17th pick, the Las Vegas Raiders, Mike, is it in? It's in, but, and I have to do it, I'm sorry. Nick Ferguson's put a comment in for you. Um, he says that Horn would make a nice pickup for my former Ryan Fire teammate and DC, Vance Joseph. There That's go. true. There you go. Nice. Good to have you with us, Nick, on today's yeah. People's Draft. But it's time now for the Raiders. Nation, what's up? Barry Williams, member of Silver and Black UK, with the 17th pick of the People's Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle, Oklahoma State. Let's go Raiders! Love the pick. Love the pick. Gruden wants tough guys. Mayock wants tough guys. This guy is the toughest physically. I, when I watched that group of tackles, I thought this was the most physical offensive tackle in the draft. Not as athletic as some of those other guys, but I'm going to tell you something. He is a cornerstone right tackle guy. I think he, he's, you know, they want to run that power running game, that gap scheme. And I think that he's a perfect guy for them, for the Raiders. He, he fits the Raider mystique. And I got to tell you, my man right there, I, I, look, I, I, you almost got to – can you replay his entry? Can you take us back to his entry? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I, I, I just I, – when, when I see greatness, I got I to gotta acknowledge it. Here we go. Here we go. Great 
Raid Nation, what's up? Barry Williams, member of Silver and Black UK, with the 17th pick of the People's Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select, Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle, Oklahoma State. Let's go Raiders! Somewhere in heaven, Al Davis is smiling down on Barry because he's he didn't he didn't walk in right to the podium. He strode in. He had more swagger per inch than anybody in the draft so far. Truly a silver and black fan. I love it. I love it. I love it. Spence, what do you think of the pick? You know, I think there's there's two sides to this. I think the first side is it makes a lot of sense. You know, you, you lose Trent or you, you get you trade Trent Brown back to the Patriots and uh, you got a guy like Josh Jacobs. And like you said, in that power run gap scheme, you know, with Tom Cable and company, I think it makes sense. You know, you got a guy that can really, uh, you know, create some movement at the point of attack in the run game and is nasty and competitive and tough, you know, on the other and and. You know, if that did come to fruition, I think that's only going to open up, you know, more space for guys like Henry Ruggs and Darren Waller down the field. So I think there's a lot of uh, validity to it. The other side to it, though, is just going back to last year with the regime, you know, they spoke a lot about their philosophy, you know, and their philosophy was about drafting players from programs, you know, with pedigree, you know, with winning pedigree. So I think, you know, especially in that first round pick, taking cornerstone players, guys that are going to really galvanize the locker room, you know, and be leaders on the team. So, you know, I think that's going to also couple into the pick, you know, who they pick, you know, whether it's going to be somebody from a team that's, you know, been part of those national championship teams. Like we saw a lot of Clemson players get drafted there. So it'll be interesting to see kind of where that fits with, you know, the philosophy that we heard about last year. Wasn't he the guy, Jeff, that done the, the massive breath? It wasn't, it wasn't the bench press, but he went crazy in the gym and everybody was going nuts. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. Was, he would yeah. fit in Vegas very well, wouldn't he? <laughs> yes, he yeah. yes, he will. Hey, hey now, as, the, as we go to the 18th pick and the Dolphins are on the clock, fellas, we've had four defensive players drafted at this point. There is a slew of defensive players. And particularly, now, obviously, some of these guys come with questions. But right now, if you're the Dolphins, you've got two guys in your own city, Spence, somewhere where you, wherever you're holed up in Miami, somewhere in the 305 area code, you got two great, great edge pass rushers. Phillips, I think, has unbelievable talent. Question about his, you know, his, his injury history and his concussion history. And Russo, who has not played an awful lot and is really raw, but is just a unbelievable athlete. Do the Dolphins go edge rusher here i think that makes sense i think greg rousseau makes a lot of sense um you know it it comes down to this is that you look at you know how from coming from that new england tree the types of players they deploy the size the length the athleticism i think they can unlock that with greg rousseau i think they're going to understand that you know he's a red shirt freshman that had that type of production and i think it makes a really 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 good pick to fit into that front that really kind of performed better than many expected last year. So it makes a lot of sense, Jeff. You you make a great point because you you look at that Dolphin defense, which is off of the blueprint that was Belichick's defense in New England. And you go through Willie McGinnis and you go through Mike Vrabel and you go through Kyle Van Noy. You go through those long bodied physical edge guys. They love those kind of guys. Russo would be that guy personified. He's raw. But that's what you, you, you good, that's what you hire coaches for, is to coach this kid. Michael, let's take a look at what the Dolphins do with the 18th pick, because it's in. Jeff, I got to do this. I'm really sorry. Peter Dunford, let's go Raiders. Don't pull the Raiders. Miami Dolphins. Jeff, you're a pirate. O-R. Claire the Bear, good fit for the Raiders. Uh, Miami Dolphins are excited. Uh, people are loving the entrance. Barry O'Connell saying all that's missing is a WWE theme music. <laughs> David Crook saying fins up. Naji at 18 going like this. Here is the pick, and I think you might know who this is, Jeff. I just have a little feeling you might know who this is. Hi, this is Henry Hodgson, and with the 18th pick in the People's Draft, the Miami Dolphins select running back Najee Harris from Alabama. Go Dolphins. Hollywood, Henry. I, 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 first of all, we have arrived. This show 
is legit. We have arrived. I'm calling it out to all the world because there's not another show you're going to watch. I'm telling you that has a vice president of international marketing for the National Football League making picks. Henry Hodgson picks Najee Harris, running back Alabama for his Dolphins. It's a need pick all the way. Spence, what do you think? I think it's a really good pick. You know, I think the Dolphins are in such a good situation. Maybe they do move back and manipulate the draft board a little bit. But if they do stay there, they're getting a safe player. I mean, it not you don't hear a lot about Najee Harris enough in the first round. And maybe it's because of, you know, the discount uh, with the running back market. But you're talking about the most balanced, well-rounded back in the draft that can do everything. You know, he's a physical runner. He's an instinctive runner. He can hit singles, doubles, triples, home runs. He's going to help you in the pass game. He's going to protect his former teammate in Tua. You can't miss with that type of player. So I think it's a good pick. Michael, what is the what do the people say about it? What do the people say about the, the pick? The, pe- the, pe- the people love it, man. Like people were talking about Najee Harris for the last two or three picks to the Dolphins. Like Miami Dolphins UK have turned up here tonight. Like they're as I said, they're one of the biggest accounts, but they're loving it. They love the pick. They love the show as well. Loads of comments saying uh, beast mode, please. Um, respect, great pick. Uh, and people loving Hollywood Henry as well. <laughs> 19th <laughs> pick in the draft belongs to the Washington football team. Uh, they're on the clock. This is, a, this is, again, a rising football team. This is a football team that has gotten better. I think it's, a, it's an organization that's got, gotten better under Ron Rivera. This is now an opportunity for them to take the next step with this pick. Spence, where do you see the, the Redskins going with this pick right now? Or, the, excuse me, the Washington football team going with this pick? Yeah, I think there's a lot of ways they can go. But like you said, I think they're really on the rise. I think that defense that's really had an emphasis of being drafted in the last couple of years is coming to fruition. Guys like Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, and obviously Chase Young last year, you know, they signed Landon Collins in free agency. So I think they have a lot of – tools and young tools on defense i could see them you know adding to some pieces on offense you know there's you know terry terry mclaurin is making that jump going into his third year there is a tackle need you know ever since losing trent williams so if they do feel good tackles on the board and this there's some going to be some depth in this tackle draft i could see them going that route you know the, the big eichenberg the, the kid out of notre dame that we didn't have in our top five has gotten an awful lot of play late in the draft or late in the process for the draft so he's a name you can you can take a look at Michigan. There's a Michigan tackle that's still on the board. That that uh, again, I think he's a he's a developmental kind of kid. Michael, what do you say right here for the Washington football team with a 19th pick? I said a pick is in, man. You ready for it? It's in. Let's have it. Let's have Let's it. Let's have it. My name is Paul Mannering from Wax and Lyrical with Mains and Ducks. And with the 19th pick, the NFC East champ Washington football team select Jeremiah Awusu Koromoa, linebacker at Notre Dame, beat Dallas. Awusu Koromoa, the really athletic linebacker from Notre Dame, comes off the board. Again, Ron Rivera, who played linebacker in the National Football League, loves his linebackers. They get instantly more athletic at the position with this pick. Spence, what's your take? You know, thinking about it, I never really actually went through this scenario, but it could make sense. I mean, you talk about, you know, Rivera's history. They did draft a guy, you know, in Carolina, Shaq Thompson, you know, that was more of that coverage linebacker in the first round. And, you know, like I said on the on our previous show, I think you can do so much with the Wusu Kimura. I mean, this is a guy who can, you know, he could play strong safety in their scheme in certain packages and then sub down in a base defense. You know, he's rangy. He can blitz. You know, he's all over the field. He's got great pursuit range. He plays tough and competitive. And you talk about that defense. I mean, they're going to get after the quarterback. Montez Sweat, Chase Young, Jonathan Allen. And you have a guy that can cover and close and, and cover tight ends. I mean, it, it's actually a really nice fit, you know, to, to kind of take the strategy of investing – high end to continue to invest in your defense, you know, as a defensive head coach. Yeah, I think that's really true. I think Ron Rivera would love to win football games on defense. Uh, obviously, uh, they showed last last year when they won the division and nobody gave him, gave him a chance. And they won a division with a quarterback who's coming off of a multiple, you know, he was like a hospital ward quarterback situation. And, and uh, 
They got rid of a first rounder that failed. I mean, they've done a lot right in Washington. And I think this is another one of those steps of doing it right. Great kid, great talent, will fit in, gives you position flexibility. I see it as a great pick. The Chicago Bears, a historic franchise. The Windy City Chicago Bears are on the board. Big, big pick now. And this draft is huge for a lot of people in Chicago because they're running out. You know, that cat had nine lives. Well, I think Matt Nagy and, and Ryan Pace are on life, life number eight. They, they cannot make a mistake with this pick. They cannot make a mistake with this draft. The pick is in. Mike, who do the Bears go with? Shout out Claire the Bear as well before we make the pick. And the pick is in. Here we go. With the Bears on the clock at number 20 overall, they need help on both offense and on defense. On offense, they could use another wide receiver, an offensive tackle, and this is assuming that they don't try and move up to go get a quarterback. But with the number 20 overall pick in the 2021 People's Draft, the Bears select cornerback Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech. All right. Do we Bears go defense. A lot of people thought they go playmaker here. They tried to get up for a quarterback. Didn't happen. Spence, you really like this kid when we talked about corners. Tell tell the fans why Caleb Farley makes a great fit in that Chicago defense. Yeah, well, I think you you focus on the front seven, what they have. You know, Akeem Hicks, Khalil Mack, Roquan Smith. They bring in Robert Quinn. You know, so they got they definitely have the pass rush. You know, I think they got some interesting safeties. They pick up, you know, Desmond Trufant, but there definitely is a need at that other cornerback spot. And I think when you look at Caleb, I mean, you're talking about a guy that could easily have been the number one corner in the draft hadn't it been for some of the, um, you know, injury history that he'd suffered. Fluid, big, can play press can play in zone, has really, really good range in the passing game and great ball skills and a lot of ball production when he was playing. So like I said on the show, I think it just comes down to this. As long as you're comfortable with the medical history, you know that you're going to get this guy for at least a second contract, uh, you're getting a really, really good football player. I got to have the Chicago Bears fans out there hit us with your take on this pick because there was so much speculation that the Bears would go offense, that they needed to improve that offense. They, their defense is good enough to win with. You know, they lose Cardella Patterson, who was a big weapon for them last year. Uh, Mike, we got anything from Bears Nation out there about this pick? Yeah, Claire, the Bears fan, for the record, I wanted to drop back and I've seen a lot of content. I think you were either on the Irish Bears show or going on it this week. They all want to trade up. I actually think they will trade up. I don't think they'll trade up to the top three or top four, but I think you'll see them. I think you will see them trade up because they have to get somebody very, very good in terms of the skill set offensively. But uh, that's the reaction so far. A couple of people on YouTube. Um, David, love the Bears pick. The uh, Caleb Farley has a lot of injury history. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and then again, that's one of the things that these scouts weigh very, very closely when you talk about injury history. Is it a, you know, is it a situation that's going to be a recurring injury history? I mean, now, we've seen guys go way high with, with worse injury histories than Caleb Farley has. However, each one is, is uh, evaluated individually. And these guys, Spence, talk about what this kid would have gone through in the, you know, even in this COVID year in terms of medical exams for the injuries that he's had. Yeah, I mean, in, 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 even in this year, but in normal years, I mean, scouts are gathering, you know, information, medical information really on him since his junior year, you know, coming in and, and meeting with the athletic trainer and, you know, trying to garner as much as they can. And then once, you know, the season's over and they can interact with the players, I mean, they're going to request their own information. They're going to have their team doctors reach out to his uh, surgeons. You know, he was uh, flown into Indy, you know, for a medical uh, evaluation. And then usually guys with lingering injury histories, they'll get flown back in, you know, for a medical recheck that they call. Now, I know with COVID this year, things were done a little differently, but you can best believe he's been through the gamut, you know, putting – his body going in biodexes and measuring kind of, you know, the strength of his joints and, you know, all those things they have to weigh when they're about to invest, you know, a multi-million dollar contract into a player. All right. The Indianapolis Colts are on the line and Michael, we have anything from the fans out there you want to pass to us? Oh, you're, you're, you're muted, Mike. It's all this technology, isn't it? We, we've, we've all the Colts fans. Uh, to be honest, we haven't any comments yet, but we, to be honest, just off camera, 
been chatting to the UK Colts fans the last few days. They're very excited for this pick, and the pick is in. UK so let's go. Fans. Let's see who the Colts have. Go. Representing UK Colts fans, Elliot Denton, with the 21st overall pick in the People's Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Jalen Phillips, defensive end, Miami. Go horse, go Colts, let's go. I don't think you needed. I don't think you need to look at it very much more than just that picture of Jalen Phillips running without his shirt on to know what they're getting in in uh, in Indianapolis. This kid is an absolute freak of an athlete. Now, you're talking about a guy that was one of the top high school players in America when he was coming out of high school. He goes to UCLA, uh, actually gives up football because of concussive issues. Now, he, he did well on the field while he was at UCLA, went back to Miami, played one year in Miami, Spence. When you looked at the tape, what did you see with this guy? You know, you saw a guy that – really just jumped off the tape that maybe, you know, you didn't really see it the same at UCLA. I mean, he did look like, you know, a first round pick on that tape, the pass rushing ability, the range he has, even the production he had in the run game. I thought he had probably the most nuance out of the whole group as a pass rusher, you know, with all the different moves and setups he could deploy. So I think from that standpoint, you know, it was intriguing, but again, you know, it's going to come down to this. It's going to come down to, being comfortable with some of the stuff at UCLA, being comfortable with his injury history and his path that got him here, you know, but kudos to him. You know, he showed up in his contract year, quote unquote, you know, to kind of put himself in this spot. I do know this with Indianapolis, though. You know, you want to learn about uh, personnel or personnel evaluation. You watch Chris Ballard talk on a press conference. I mean, he's one of the most, if not the most respected personnel evaluators in the league. They don't miss as a staff. You know, he, he uses the staff. He, he, he has the staff dig and get all the background info, and, and they manipulate the draft board really, 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 really well. So I think Colts of fans can, uh, you know, rest comfortably knowing that he's in charge of that team. You know, it was interesting uh, on Inside the Huddle this past week, Neil interviewed uh, Frank Reich, the quarterback, I mean, ex-quarterback and now the head coach at Indianapolis. And he talked about finding a guy that they were comfortable with finding a, a guy that they believed could be a great Indianapolis Colt. Think about if this kid can stay healthy, right, and you see the kind of edge impact he can have, and you've got Buckner inside and you've got this kid coming on. This, this Indianapolis defense can be really, really good if this kid pans out. I think that's a great pick uh, by, by the Indianapolis Colts. And, again, a great job of presenting the pick. Mike, Tennessee is on the clock. Have the Titans decided? They have, but also the Titans have not selected Jalen Phillips. That's my first boo-boo technology-wise tonight. There we go. Titans did not select him. The Colts did. The Titans are now here. The pick is in. Apologies about that, Jeff, but here we go. Here's the Titans. Hi, lads. It's Sean here in Cork from the Irish Titans. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 People's Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Greg Newsom II, cornerback Northwestern. Tighten up. Well, tighten up, it will be the theme on defense because this is a good, good football player that they just got out of Northwestern. Newsom, another one of those coveted corners on the board. Spence, talk about Greg Newsom. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting pick because you're talking about a guy that, you know, is really, really fluid, probably the best off man corner in the draft, you know, can really stay in phase with, you know, all these number one receivers he's going to see in the league. You know, I think the uh, the only interesting part will be is it, it, he does have a similar skill set reminiscent to a guy that they lost in free agency in a Dory Jackson. And um, I don't know if they necessarily had the same returns they were hoping getting him draft in the first round. So sometimes there could be some bias, you know, in the skill set that, you know, you draft previously, you know, whether they draft that same player. But, I mean, it definitely fills a need. You know, they bring over Bud Dupree. So they got the pass rush. I think we're going to hear a lot about a guy named Jeffrey Simmons, you know, who was a draft pick a couple of years ago coming off an ACL that has the chance to be a really dominant player in the NFL. They pick up Danico Autry from the Colts. So they're kind of primed again on the front seven. And, uh, you know, the other way I could see it going if they don't go corner is I wouldn't be surprised if they do grab a receiver, you know, losing uh, 
Corey Davis in free agency. And you see a lot of these guys on, on, on the board left, these speed, these explosive down the field receivers. But I think if they land Greg Newsom, you know, they're getting a really, really good cover corner. I think if they go Newsom here, what they're saying is the depth at the receiver class, you know, be up. I mean, it's going to be there in the second round and you may go receiver in the second round if you're the Titans with this one. Uh, the Jets uh, had, have gotten the 23rd pick for Jamal Adams in a, in a trade that went down during the year. Uh, Joe Wolf, the general manager of the Jets, is on the clock. The Jets pick is in. What are the New York Jets going to do with the 23rd pick in the draft? Hi, guys. Fraser here again from the New York Jets UK slash Ireland fan page. The New York Jets UK slash Ireland fan page with the 23rd pick in the People's Draft select Elijah Vera Tucker, guard, USC. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Boy, I think this is a good pick. I really think this is a good pick because this is a guy who not only was a dominant guard that could slide outside and play tackle, he gives you massive position flexibility. He comes from a great program at USC. He has a tremendous history of you know, we talked about Sewell and some of the other young tackles didn't have a lot of, you know, film in the bank. This kid played for four years, started for four years at USC. Spence, what do you like about Elijah Vera Tucker? I think this is a great pick. You know, you're talking about, like you said, Jeff, this is the guy that's got some guard tackle flex. I think he's going to, you know, slide back inside and kind of play in his natural position. He's got great foot speed. You know, he's got range and pass protection. He can move players still in the run game. He's tough. He's competitive. We're talking about a guy that was, he was the most outstanding lineman at USC the same year that Austin Jackson, you know, was drafted in the first round by the Dolphins. So I think this is a, a really home run pick, a guy that, you know, I'm surprised has lasted this long in the draft. All right. The Pittsburgh Steelers are now on the clock. And as we look at the Steelers, I got to say that, you know, you, you got some issues with this football team. And I think, you know, one of the one of the areas where the, there's concern is offensive linemen, right? Because you've had you've had guys leave. You've had guys retire They They didn't they couldn't run the ball the length of their arm last year. <laughs> but then there's also the question at running back. So do you go a Travis ATN here or do you go the best offensive lineman on the board? Spence, how do you see it for the Steelers? Yeah, I think you're talking about another group that's got a really good history of drafting good players and, you know, whether they, you know, they, there is some needs there to fill. You know, I still think that they were built initially and have always been built, you know, from the inside out. So I do see them, you know, focusing on the front, you know, and if there is a tackle, you know, that fits their culture, fits their style of play. Um, you know, they hopefully, I know uh, Villanueva hasn't re-signed yet, but, you know, he could always come back in as the left tackle. But you know, I do still think there's a need there. And this is a team that has drafted, you know, offensive linemen in the first round traditionally. Okay. Mike, let's see who the Steelers go with with the 24th pick of the draft. For the 24th pick, we've got Stuart Love. So if you're an NFL fan in the UK, you probably have seen Stuart's Twitter account. Stuart's pick. Hi, everyone. It's Stuart Love, NFL checking in here. And um, just before we get started, I just want to give a massive shout out to um, my business, Five Star Imports and Memorabilia, um, Andy Turner over at Silver FX, who makes this amazing merchandise, um, and everyone is part of my podcast, The Fourth and Inches Network. So, in the 2021 NFL Draft, with the 24th pick in the first round, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Travis Etienne, running back Clemson. Go Steelers! Hey, we call it Travis Etienne, running back out of Clemson, dynamic, dynamic player, big time speed, big time production. Spence, how do you evaluate Travis Etienne? Yeah, I think he's a guy that, like you said, Jeff, I think he's got home run hitter ability. You know, he's a smooth kind of slashing style runner. He's got the patience and vision, you know, that's really going to be important in that scheme that they, that run scheme that they use. Um, he can catch the ball well out of the backfield and really is kind of one of his underrated skill sets. And, and you saw them, especially when Le'Veon was there, is detaching players. And you'd see a lot of empty, you know, with Big Ben 
kind of moving the rock around. And I think uh, Etienne does fit well nicely in that type of offense where he can detach, you know, and play out wide as a slot or a receiver. Mike, what do the people have to say? What do we got out there from the fans? Fred Flunk just said, I'm going to call him out for this. Uh, Mighty Mike, thank you for that. Which, which funeral home did you nick the intro music out of? I, I like the intro music. I was trying to get a little dramatic, impressed. There's a few comments, and it's not about the Steelers yet, but there's a lot of people, you know, like you're talking about having that Greg Newsom pick for the Titans, Irish Titans, big Twitter profile. Uh, and Aniko Kayan saying being a Jets fan, having Greg Newsom fall to 22 would be a killer. Over 4,000 people have watched this so far, by the way. Uh, Andy says, Aloha. Uh, Claire de Beres says, have to say there, there are some amazing picks by the people. The, the UK fan base should be proud. Uh, Chris Craig says, Aloha, Jeff. And Fraser repping us, New York Jets, UK, Ireland, and protecting our future. Jets, 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 emojis, and a heart. Uh, and no comments on the Steelers yet, but I'm sure there will be over in the next couple of days. Uh, uh, silver and I mean, excuse me, silver and black, black and yellow nation. They, we got to hear from you because I thought Stewart did a great job. I think I like that pick. But what do the rest of Steelers Nation say? Would you have gone offensive line in that spot or ATN with his with his uh, home run hitter ability? When we talk about home run hitter. We're talking about a guy who can make take a simple zone play and go 80 with it because he does possess that kind of skill set. And as Spencer said, he's also dynamic out of the backfield as a pass receiver. The Jags are up on a with a pick that they got for Jalen Ramsey from the Rams. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pick number 25. Let's go to that pick, Mike. Hi, I'm Michael Lowry from the McLaugh podcast. With the 25th pick in the People's Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Jamin Davis, linebacker from Kentucky. He sounds a bit like me, doesn't he? Yeah. Ah, Jamin <laughs> Davis, linebacker from Kentucky. Spence, you love this kid in our draft shows. You talk very highly about him. I think it's a great pick for Jacksonville. And again, what 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 was that jersey I just saw on our? That was the <laughs> the Craigavon Cowboys. They the are Craig Evan Cowboys. Team, actually. I, when he walked out there with that pick, I said, "Who do we have from Oklahoma State?" Because that's what what Oklahoma State's uniforms look like. So actually, great great shout out to the to the uniform. Spence, talk about this guy. I love this pick. I mean, and this kind of fits. I know this is a new regime coming in there, but. Just with the type of players they have on defense, I mean, you have Josh Allen, you have Miles Jack coming back. To have Jamin come in, I think he has that Mike outside linebacker flex, you know. There was always a player, you know, when Jacksonville was playing their prime defense, a guy by the name of Telvin Smith, you know, who ended up fortunately not uh, being with them anymore. But, you know, Jamin has a very similar skill set. He's got range. He can play in the box. He can. He's got enough uh, instincts and obviously athletic ability to play in the passing game. I love this pick. I think he's got tremendous upside, you know, and I could see him being a nice fit in that defense. All right, the Cleveland Browns are picking in the, with the 26th pick. Now, that is not where the Cleveland Browns normally make their picks, and that's a good thing because you get the 26th pick after you've had some success. I think the Cleveland Browns are a team on the rise. Interestingly, went out and got Jadavian Clowney right before the draft. You think about that pairing with Miles Garrett. This could be a very, very good football team. And they got they play in an awful tough division. An awful tough division. The Cleveland Browns with the 26 pick, Mike. What do you got? Hi, my name is John Cal. I'm an Irish Browns fan and podcaster, uh, representing the Galway Browns backers here in Ireland today. Uh, for the people's draft and with the 26th pick in the people's draft the cleveland browns the world's team select joseph osai edge defender texas all right now this is the first one that i go woo if this happened i would go woo because I think there are guys in that edge class rated much higher than this guy. Spence, what does Osai bring to the Browns? 
He's got tons of athletic ability, Jeff. You know, he's he's raw, but he's got a lot of range. I mean, he's he's kind of that quote unquote true speed rusher. You know, that would be another guy to pair with Miles Garrett. Obviously, they yeah, had Jadavian Clowney in that mix. You know, you you think that you know if they were going to go D line, obviously losing Sheldon Richardson, you know, Christian Barmore would be a great fit. But you know, if they do end up going with Osai, I mean, you look at the Browns roster as a whole. There's not really much holes there. I mean, Andrew Barron and company's really plugged up and shored up, you know, all the areas and with some premier players at each position group. So, you know, if Osai ends up being the best player on their board, you know, they're looking for that, you know, high end pass rusher to kind of deploy as a trio with uh, him, Garrett and Jadavian Clowney. And they got Tack McKinley, too, that they're trying to, you know, revive his career there. So it'd be an interesting pick for sure. But tons of athletic ability. You know, he really, really can. um you know, press the edge as a vertical speed rusher. I, I would have thought secondary or I would have thought linebacker here. Now, maybe not linebacker and maybe they didn't go, the Browns didn't go linebacker here just because of the lack of depth in this linebacker class. But certainly, you know, again, and I know I probably would be over drafting the kid, but Nick Bolton out of Missouri, I just love that kid. When you put on that tape and you see how violent he plays, I love that kid. Uh, all right, the Browns took Joseph Osai, Edge from Texas. The Baltimore Ravens are on the clock with the 27th pick. Hi, this is Ben from the UK Ravens. I also own Touchdown Trips, but that's the last free plug for that, I promise. With the 27th selection in the 2021 People's Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota Golden Gophers. All right. One of my sleepers in the draft, Rashad Bateman from Minnesota. Again, not one of the guys that was highly pub going into the draft, but I really like this kid's talent. I like what he can bring to the table. And certainly for the Ravens, this gives their quarterback another weapon. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff. I mean, uh, a lot of talk's been about, you know, Baltimore acquiring, you know, another pass catcher, you know, to kind of aid Lamar and deploy some more weapons. And they grab Sammy Watkins in free agency. You know, they got Marquise Brown that I think, you know, provides that vertical threat. So, you know, with Rashad, you really got to put on the 2019 tape, you know, to feel good about kind of what he can do and what his ceiling is. You know, the 2020 tape uh, was a little underwhelming. You know, he was a COVID uh, opt out and then opted back in. But, you know, I think he's got a lot of ability. You know, he can run, he's a route runner. You know, he can win down the field and elevate at the catch point. He's smooth and fluid and has pretty good ball skills. So the 2019 tape is definitely a better uh just better better scope of what he can be as a national football league receiver but you know from a from the position standpoint it definitely makes sense in terms of you know all the uh you know based on last year and all the things you're hearing through the offseason about where the ravens are looking all right we're at the 28th pick the new orleans saints are on the clock mike what do we got from the fans out there well just first off just in regards to uh, ben and that ravens pick there that was actually decided by the whole of the UK Ravens group on Facebook, as far as I know. So it's interesting to see. And then they're obviously coming up again now at 31. So it'll be cool to see what happens. There's a couple of comments there. The first one was from Fred Flunk saying, Coach Mike Spence, another top show tonight. Loving how the tribe is growing. Thanks, lads. Uh, and then in regards to the Ravens, great prick, great pick. <laughs> Lamar going to have some real fun throwing to him. I agree. I mean, like, I didn't realize you're such, such a big fan, Jeff, but we got comments here going, Go Gophers from Clarence Bear. Ravens fans seem happy. Yeah, I think I'd be happy if that pick, if I was a Ravens fan and that kid was available, I, I think that's a really good pick. Saints pick is in. Who do the New Orleans Saints like with the 28th pick? Hi, my name is Catherine. I'm from London and I'm a proud member of the Hey That Nation. With the 28th pick of the People's Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Asante Samuel Jr., cornerback, Florida State. Love it, Cat. I love your pick. I think it makes total sense for your football team. You're getting a guy who's got a, you know, he's got the bloodlines. He's 
for, he puts it on film every week. Maybe not as big as you'd like to have, but I really think a good football player. Spence, what's your take? I love the pick, Chad. I, I, I'm shocked he's lasted this long. Um, listen, the Saints have a – I mean, their draft their draft record is high. You know, that regime's really well-respected. They don't really miss on first-round picks. And you kind of hit it on the head, Jeff. I mean, you're talking about pairing him with just a really pure cover corner like Marshawn Lattimore, and you have a guy like Asante who can drive, who can jump routes, who can – and it's interesting because – you know, they did bring in a guy, uh, Janoris Jenkins, who had a good year for them last year, you know, and then you throw in Asante to plug up that hole, and it, I don't think they'll really skip a beat. You know, that's a really, really good fit for that defense. You can never have enough corners in today's NFL. You know, it was interesting when Al Davis was running the Raiders, you know, he used to talk all the time about how do you build a defense? Do you build it from the front back? Do you build it from the outside end? He really believed you build it from the corners inside, and if you can cover – you can do enough things with your scheme to take away the run. Asante Samuel gives the New Orleans Saints a, you know, a real good cover corner. The 29th pick belongs to the Green Bay Packers. The Packers and Packer Nation, Cheesehead Nation, is on the clock. This is one of the most vocal fan bases, one of the biggest fan bases in the world. Let's hear what the Green Bay Packers are going to do with the 29th pick of the draft. And you're saying it's one of the biggest in the world. Glad to tell you, Jeff, you've got the UK and Irish Packers with the pick, the biggest group in the UK and Ireland. Hey guys, that's the Diddy NFL here from at UK Packers, ukpackers.co.uk. And in this draft at pick 29, the UK Packers are going to select wide receipt. I'm only missed. The Packers don't draft wide receivers in the first round. It's safety Trayvon Merrick from TCU. I tell you, I love it. I love it. A little <laughs> flavor from Stay. It's good to have you with us. UK Packers fans, Ireland Packers fans, I'm going to tell you something. There are a lot of people that love this kid, love this kid, as, and many had him picked as the top safety in this draft. This is a team that obviously when you go back to last fall, they're not playing in the Super Bowl because they – fell apart in the secondary, gave up big plays in the back end way too many times. This kid will help them from that high safety position. I like to pick a TCU kid. You know that if he played for Gary Patterson at TCU, he's been coached hard. He's been tough. Again, I think this is a nice pick for the Packers. What do you see, Spence? Yeah, I see a true center fielder. I mean, this is a team that went and grabbed Darnell Savage in the first round a couple years ago and you know, Darnell was more of that really versatile, you know, cover guy that could come in the slot, you know, that would blitz, that would attack, that would be aggressive. With more, you got someone that can play in the post, you know, someone that can play as a robber, someone that's got really, really good uh, ball reaction and uh, coverage instincts. So I think you're getting a guy that can, you know, really patrol, you know, as a deep half or, or a deep third player, you know, in, in their scheme. So I like the pick, but I would not be surprised if they grab a wide receiver. There's some really good wide receivers left on the board. You know, there's an interesting one in Rondell Moore. You know, that would be an interesting fit, you know, within that group, you know, having a guy like a Randall Cobb type. So it would be interesting to see, but I think Trayvon Moore kind of can definitely uh, assimilate well as a, you know, as a deep safety in that scheme. Well, you're talking about a, a team that has done everything right recently. Brandon Bean and the Buffalo Bills, they're on the clock with the 30th pick. I think this is interesting. You mentioned Rondale Moore, and I, I, you know, when you look at Beasley as he's coming down to the end of his career, Rondale Moore has many of the same physical qualities and physical traits that Beasley has. He's got that lightning quickness, that short burst quickness. He's really good in the slot. Could be a guy that you get and groom to be the next one of those little slot players. I think it's really going to be interesting. Or do the Bills go with Christian Barmore out there still the – consensus best inside defender in this draft that was one of the areas last year I thought they were a little soft on defense was between the tackles let's see what the Bills are going to do with the 30th pick in the NFL draft I would be remiss to say this the pick is from the Buffalo Bills the Irish supporters group Buffalo Bills and my god it's the best pick of the whole night
I am Buffalo O'Bill, and with the 30th pick of the People's Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Jason Oe Oe Edge Rusher, Penn State. Now, let's first of all, that was outstanding. That was that you're right, that was a great one. Now, I'm not sure about this pick right here because we're we're talking and and Spence, you can call me old school. I choose to look at it as time tested. If you're not a productive college player, how are you going to be a productive NFL player? And the I mean, I'm not an analytics guy. I'm not a stats guy. That, I, I, I. But I watch tape, and I see a guy makes that many sacks in a, in a college football season. Zero. How do you project? And I understand the measurables. I understand all that. This one is a buff. I mean, buffle O for like, oh, my goodness. Why did you pick that guy? <laughs> yeah, Jeff, I mean – well, I think we disagree on the fact that I I don't know if he will go in the second first round, but I do think he'll be picked in the you know definitely the top fifty picks of the draft. I mean, this is a guy with you know tremendous athletic ability, and the athletic ability you see it on tape. You know, does it convert to sacks? Obviously not, but it converts to being disruptive. I mean, he's got great get off, really really good change of direction. He has power; he can convert that speed to power and collapse. You know, there's just a lot of refinement that he needs to be able to finish. You know, he needs to develop as a pass rusher. He needs to be, you know, a little more instinctive than reactive. And that's easier said than done. You know, that sometimes can't be coached. You know, sometimes that is natural innate instincts. But there's tons of ability there. I think there's going to be two camps. There's going to be the camp that you sit in. And then there's going to be the camp that, you know, Daniil Hunter, who was, you know, in fair draft in the third round, only had a couple sacks coming out at LSU and turned into a pretty productive pass rusher in the NFL. So I think – you're going to see two two schools of thought. I mean, Buffalo's a team on the rise. They draft really, really well and smart. They do take uh, high trait players, but they also take uh, instinctive and uh, productive players. So it's going to be uh, interesting to see where that pick lands. That's a great pick. I love it. I mean, again, if you're a Buffalo fan, that may be a place where you say you got Jerry Hughes who's getting older, right? And you take the kid, and now they took Epinesa last year. That's another reason why it makes me wonder a little bit. But, you know, Epinesa's on the rise. This kid could come in, and he could sit behind those guys and learn to be a pro player. I do say this, and I agree with you on, on one part of that, that that Buffalo staff really coaches. I mean, they do a great job. Leslie Frazier and the defensive coaches do a great job of coaching players. And so, again, this would make sense from that regard because he is a high-end traits guy, you know, as you look at it. All right, Baltimore back on the clock in a pick that they got from Kansas City for the offensive tackle, Zeus Brown. Let's talk about the Ravens. What do you do if you're the Ravens here? Where do you go with this one, Spence? Yeah, I mean – Offensive line makes sense. You know, tackle obviously does make sense. You're just, uh, you know, as Mark alluded to, you're going to try to make a market efficiency, you know, and uh, Zeus Brown's about to cash in probably after this year in a big payday. So you get to draft another starting tackle on a, uh, on a controlled uh, rookie contract. So I think there's some good depth left. Um, it's interesting though, because there's more of the true left tackles left in the draft, you know, in terms of some of the top end, you know, and having Ronnie Stanley, obviously their left tackle, but, you know, in this day and age, I don't really put too much stock into left and right tackle because I think you need to be able to protect whatever side you align on with the pass rushers, you know, that we're seeing in the NFL. So I think tackle does definitely make a lot of sense. However, you know, with the Ravens, you know, they do uh, build through the middle, you know, and I do see some good centers left on the board. Absolutely. I really do see some good centers. I really, really do like Josh Myers out of Ohio State. Obviously, Landon Dickerson makes tons of sense from that Alabama uh, pipeline, you know, that ends up always ending up in Baltimore. So we'll Creed, Humph Creed Humphrey's still out there, you know, and again, I know when you start talking about centers, right, your blood gets a little hot as the next, <laughs> as the next center. I know you, I know you love those guys that no are doubt. snapping the ball. All right. So let's go to Baltimore and let's see the pick is in. Let's see what the Ravens do with the 31st pick. I would be remiss to say this. We had the Brit chief lined up. He couldn't do it. He was devastated. Here's the Ravens pick. Hi, this is Ben again from the UK Ravens. 
And with the 31st pick in the 2021 People's Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Gregory Rousseau, Edge, Miami. Well, I tell you what, Wink Martindale, he's he's doing cart, cartwheels. Because this kid, as raw as he is, as raw as he is, Spence, he is a great-looking body. And, I mean, he is a guy that you look at him and you say, he makes plays just – I mean, with his length, he, he, can, he can be another body away from the quarterback and still get to the quarterback with his length, his long arms and that frame – when he learns how to play, and in that system in Baltimore, I think this could be a dynamic pick for the Ravens. This is a great pick, Jeff. I mean, I, I, I'll i be honest with you. I was I forgot Craig Rousseau was still on the board because he's really so high on my board. I just – I have strong conviction with this guy. I see the upside. I see the path. This is a great pick for another reason. I mean, you're talking about a guy that if he somehow ended up there, he's going to get to pair with Calais Campbell, you know, a former Hurricane. And, you know, maybe have a little bit different skill sets, but to just to learn the way Calais played and the way Calais blossomed in the NFL, unbelievable pick. You know, the rich get richer, you know, as they say. And if it if it plays out this way, I think the Ravens are going to be really happy. Well, yeah, you think about it now. Again, you've improved yourself offensively. You got yourself another weapon for your quarterback. Obviously, uh, they, they feel that there's enough. You mentioned those inside offensive linemen. Those guys will be around later in the draft. You, you'd almost have to go this way if you're at this point with Russo's ability, his upside, and all that he has. And and you mentioned something I think really important, too, that Calais Campbell is one of those guys. You want to put that kind of guy with a kid who's as raw and young as Russo is that can mentor him, that can teach him, that can help him grow into his potential as a defensive lineman in the National Football League. Michael, what do we got from the fans? Man, it's honestly, to be honest with you, it's, it's popping. Like, obviously, as, as I said previously, the, the UK Ravens fans made that pick again. I think there was a lot of votes for that, so it's interesting to see to go with a wide receiver first, go edge after. Dom, delighted with the pick. Go Ravens. Uh, Mark, fantastic pick for the Ravens. Fantastic two picks for the Ravens. Will they trade up with those two picks? So there's a. I actually seen an article this week, boys, about them maybe trading up with those two picks and getting the quarterback. You know, save some money. Maybe let Lamar go at the end. Is am I am I crazy? Should I go after one hour and forty three minutes? I no, I would, I would, I don't want you to go, but I'm going to tell you that that idea can go because I don't see that <laughs> happening at all. As much as they have invested in Lamar Jackson, for them to trade up for a quarterback would be a shocker to me. I mean, that would be a shocker. But I don't know, Spence, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just don't see that in any scenario coming to fruition. I'm going to send you, know? you boys the link. I literally read an article this morning. I was like, what? Like, no. Well, I'll tell you what, that that must have been, that must have been somebody that had a uh, – well, I'm, forget about it. I mean, I just don't think – that ain't happening. Michael, we're on the 32nd pick. The first time in club history that the Tampa Bay Bucks have picked 32nd. Because after they won the last, previous Super Bowl, that pick got traded to the Raiders for John Gruden. So this is the first time the Raiders have ever picked at 32. Let's go. The pick is in. The 32nd pick and final pick of the first round, the Tampa Bay Bucks. Hi, it's Phil Jones from The Box UK with the 32nd pick of the 2021 People's Draft. The current Super Bowl champions select Joe Tryon, Defensive Edge, University of Washington. I am going straight to Spence on this one because when we talked Edge players, you liked this kid a ton, loved him as a matter of fact. And I've seen a lot of so-called experts that did their edge list and Tryon wasn't on it. But you really like this kid, huh, Spence? Yeah, he's my number two. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here and he's my number two rated player. You know, I was looking at the pick and I'm, I'm thinking, like, where could they go? You know, and it's really came down to Tryon, Barmore and Elijah Moore out of Old Miss that I'm surprised kind of has lasted this long. But you can't – I mean, Joe Tryon would be perfect in that fit. You know, he's coming behind Shaq Barrett and Jason Paul-Pierre. He's long. 
He's athletic. He can drop and play in space in that Todd Bowles scheme, you know, where they, they might have a time where he's going to play off the ball or have to react. I mean, great pick. It's a great pick. I love him. I think there's so much upside. He plays hard. You know, the pursuit effort, you know, the range he has, that's a, that's a home run pick. I mean, if he's there, I mean, again, you know, that's what happens when you win the Super Bowl. You know, the rich get richer, you know, when they can just take the best player available and they don't really have any immediate holes to fill. I think so, too. And I think the kid a little bit stiff, you know, maybe not as fluid as some of those other pass rushers. But when you put the tape on, and you see the effort that he brings, see the physicality that he brings, you see the 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 understanding that he brings. And I think there's a lot to be said for where a kid played college football, and what he's been asked to do. And Tryon, I think, would make a much easier transition into Todd Bowles scheme, having played in the multiple scheme that they use at the University of Washington. I see it as a great pick. Men, we have gotten through 32 picks. The people's draft is now at a close. But before we go, before we close off the draft, I want to say thank you. And I mean, a, a sincere mahalo nui law from all of us at Coffee with Coach to all of you who participate it participated in the People's Draft. We've said since the day we started this show on the, you know, on the on my brother's lanai in, in which is his porch on Kauai last year that this was going to be for the fans. It was going to be about the people. And again, it's been that case this year. This is only going to grow. Spence, I got to say thank you to you because you brought your expertise and your wisdom and all those years of scouting to the fans. I think fans, if you've listened to Spence each week, you not only learned about the players in this draft from a guy who really knows, but you learned about the process of evaluating players. Good luck in Miami. It's it's uh, I'm going to miss you. Uh, it's every week. We'll get you on on occasion to – just talk a little football. We'll do a, maybe a little post-draft evaluation after all the picks have been made about who your winners and losers are in a draft. Michael, for you, unbelievable. As always is the case, you are a stallion, and there's not too much work for you ever. No matter what I give you, you always you always seem to hit a home run with it. So um, I just want to say thank you to you and let everybody know. Every all you fans out there, what Michael does every week is phenomenal. I mean, his effort and his, you know, putting this thing together, and because I'm absolutely no help to him. I'm, all I do is bother bother him and come up with I come up with ideas. So hold on, though, hold on. You two didn't know the picks, yeah. Let, let's just put that out no, there. These no, two we guys didn't. Had we, no had, idea. we had no idea <laughs> no who idea. these picks were going to be, and that's what that's the way we wanted it, so that the actually that the fans were making the picks and that we were reacting to what the fans did. So again, this is good for me because this is like, I'm, I'm getting a little uh, pre-draft workout for when we go to the draft for Sky Sports. Watch the draft on Sky Sports. And I'm going to say this uh, again to the football fans in Ireland. For the first time in 30 years, you will have draft coverage in Ireland on terrestrial television. Michael, would you tell the fans about what you guys are doing? Um, yeah. So after the Champions League semifinal tomorrow night, we are talking to Ian Rappaport on Virgin Media Sport. I need to pinch myself when I'm saying that. But yeah, first time in 30 years. The last time was in the Super Bowl in 1991. I was born a month later. And now tomorrow night, it's back. Obviously, Sky is available in in Ireland. We obviously would entice everyone, of course, watch Sky's coverage of draft. And, and obviously, I think the pre-build up as well, Jeff's at 8 o'clock on Thursday. We're yeah. on tomorrow night for an hour, 10.30 Virgin Media Sport. Uh, and I think for anybody in Northern Ireland, it might be on YouTube on Thursday morning. If Jeff wants to get uh, sit in Hawaii and watch it as well, and Spencer. But yeah, incredible moment. Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe me and Jeff could be drinking some Malibus at SoFi Stadium next year. I'm joking. Yeah, I'll tell you what, as, as, again, <laughs> as, as we go forward, I, I, I want to tell you, watch the Sky coverage. Neil will be hosting it. He'll be quarterbacking it. Baldy will be there with me. I'll be there. Will Blackman will be there. we got a great bunch of guests coming in. And, again, thank you, everybody, for being a part of this. Time to say hello. Ah. From the mountain to the ocean, from the mountain to the ocean.